Hello, this is Dr. Michael Myers, and I'm course lead faculty for BST 322 at National University in San Diego, California. In this short presentation, I'm going to show you how to deal with some Java issues relating to StatCrunch in our courses. The issue with Java recently has been some security issues and some problems, in fact, with the Apple and Macintosh computers is that it can pose a security vulnerability. Well, Java has, of course, responded to this since Java runs on so many devices across the planet, and they have come up with many fixes and runarounds for this problem. But using StatCrunch, you still, if you have the Apple computer, you still may be experiencing some problems, but I'll show you some easy ways to get around that um, using some simple tricks. So, of course, what you want to do is sign into your StatCrunch software, and you do that right from your course page at National University. Once you open StatCrunch, you're going to first see a Java starting to load. And initially, it's going to give you that little Java circle there. It'll tell you if you're running the right version. It may send you to some websites to get an update. The first thing it'll do is show you a little dialog screen that's going to say, do you want to run this application? You should see the WebStat 1. It's coming to you from StatCrunch.com, and you want to click OK and run on that. It may also give you some warnings about security. Make sure it's coming from WebStep 1 or from Pearson, a trusted site that you can run in your computer. If you're browsing somewhere else, you're on Yahoo or CNN or some website, some other website in your Apple computer, you want to be careful uh, downloading Java from sites you're not familiar with. But now that you've done that, it quickly opens up and, again, looks exactly like the PC version with all the videos we have running. In fact, in my class, when I teach this online, I actually use the Apple computer. So it's really not an issue for this course. What you want to do is immediately, if you look down to this uh, right-hand corner here, you see some uh, links here where you can get Java. Uh, you can also, there's a link to Note to Mac users, which is going to talk about some of the same things I've talked to you about already. And then you see a little link that call that says Open in Mobile. Open in Mobile allows you to bypass all of the Java issues. In fact, a lot of people use it just because they don't like running Java on their machines or dealing with Java and all the issues. Or you can use it on your iPhone, your iPad, or your other mobile device. Because the first thing you notice is if you are using the Apple, you can't really delete some of these variable uh, columns at the top to label them. So one way around this, of course, is to just use the data tab and, and you can load the data from Excel file. So you can do that in the course if you like as well. Or you can just use the mobile version. So if we go to the mobile version, what you're going to see is you click on that. It'll give you this little warning here about unsaved components, but again, you want to check if it's coming from WebStat 1 and you've initiated the run here, you can go ahead and click Don't Block because it's coming right from Pearson. When you do that, you're going to see the mobile version open. And the first thing you notice is that if you click on the little tabs here for graphics, it has the same menu items that are in the normal version. So all of the videos you can view for the PC will work the same way on the mobile version because all of the menus are the same. So for example, quickly, if we wanted to make um, a cross-tabulation table, for example. So say we're using the example we have in week one of this class where we're looking at constructing a contingency table for the vitamin C data. So remember, this is where uh, we have an example where we have 12 patients in our study. Six took vitamin C, six took a placebo. And out of that, one person got a cold in the vitamin C group, four people got a cold in the sugar pill group. How do we make a contingency table for that? Well, if we're in that mobile version, we can very easily construct this if we just click on our new columns now. So here we can hit the delete key on the Apple and we can call these variables whatever we want. So remember in StatCrunch, every row, if we're putting in the data individually, every row is a subject or a patient. Our variable is our um, cold status, right? And whether or not they took the vitamin C. So we can just type in cold for the first variable. We can call these whatever we like, but that's going to be their cold status. The second variable is um, whether or not they took the vitamin C. So you can click in vitamin C. And then you can code these however you like, ones or twos for yes or no, or we can type yes or no. So again, we had six people in the vitamin C group. So we can Control-C and copy that, and we can paste that down by just hitting Apple-V or Control-V. Or we can type it in, but it's easier just to copy it. Uh, and then we had, out of that group, only one person got a cold. So there's one yes over there, the rest are no. Uh, in our 
vitamin C where it's going to be no, we had four people get a cold, so we can put in four yeses there. And remember the vitamin C, there was six people who did not take the vitamin C, they got a placebo or a sugar pill. So again, we can put type in no and then we can copy that and paste that one down. Again, we can do this in Excel also and then load it into our StatCrunch as well. So again, five people were a no for cold. And two people didn't get a cold that were in the vitamin C group. So again, here we have all the data now. And again, we could have done this in Excel and imported it. So here's our 12 patients. So there's 12 rows. Okay, then they're separated by variable. Here's whether or not they got a cold. So this tells us that one person in the vitamin C group that took vitamin C, one person got a cold, the other five did not. Again, here's the six people that are in the group that didn't take the vitamin C. Four of them got a cold, two of them did not. So now that we have all the data in there, we can do exactly what we did in the other videos. Just click Stat, and we can go to Tables, Contingency Table, and here we're going to click the with data because we don't have the summary data. I show you how to do the summary data in that other video, but here we'll click with with data. Again, the the uh, menus look the same. They're just colored a little differently. They're not running the Java, so it's not as pretty if you like, but it's still running a very similar version to what we see with the Java enabled version. So again, the row variable we'll just select. Remember the dependent variable or the outcome goes in the rows. So that's going to be whether they got a cold or not. We don't really care what group they're in, right? So that's going to be the column variable. So we'll click vitamin C for that one. Then we're going to want to just display the row percent. So here we want to click on the Apple Shift key to select these. Expect the count we'll do later, so we'll leave that we'll leave that one out for now. So we'll just do the row percent, the column percent, and the percent of total. These we'll do in week three when we do the chi square and we just click compute and now we see it'll bring up the table for you. Even calculates the chi-square test and we'll get to that in week three. So the cell format to get this now into Word to fix the table as you saw in the other video because we want to put in um, our percent within uh, whatever variable we're in. So an easy way to do that is you can just now drag over this and copy it. Then you can open up a Word document. And paste it. So when you do that, it brings in the table for you. And from here then you can uh, relabel this in Word. You can go in and if you select the this row, for example, in the Mac, you can hit Table Layout and you can put in put in some rows above so you can merge these cells this is all you know word stuff but you can then merge the top cells and start labeling it so this yes or no here was the vitamin C and this column here was the cold status and then also here we can go in just like I showed in that other YouTube video hit return and you can say this one is the percent within and that's going to be the first one so this will be percent within cold status and then you can label the other one so far just like we did in the YouTube video so again you can easily pull this into Word you can also copy and paste it uh, if we go back to our video You can either copy and paste this right, you know, right from Word, or you can also on the Mac you can hit Apple Shift 4 and you can take a picture of what is ever on your screen. So if you just want to capture the data, you could do this for graphs as well. Once it takes that picture, when you then go back to Word, you can just take that image, you can drag it right in and drop it, and you can paste it there as well. So there's lots of ways you can get your outputs from StatCrunch into a Word document to submit for your assignments or your final project. So again, this is a very easy way to 
use the Apple computer using the mobile app so that's right from your StatCrunch portal so if we go back there it'll take us right back to StatCrunch you can just click to the open and mobile do all the things you need for StatCrunch and bypass Java totally or you can run Java within the Apple computer once you've updated your Java, Java correctly and you can bring the input in from the Excel either way StatCrunch is still a very powerful program great cross-platform program that we can both use on the Apple and the PC.